This is your Bible Minister Day Evening News Day for Wednesday, November 10. One of the island's leading judicial officers wants parents to attend mandatory classes. Chief Magistrate Ian Weeks issued the call as he made a strong case for more stakeholders to help young people to stay clear of deviance and lawlessness. He was among panelists speaking on the topic, Is Jail Time Working Out for the Betterment of Lawbreakers? A discussion hosted by the Men's Ministry of the Cave Hill Wesleyan Holiness Church, Mantock, last evening. The foundation is what is missing. Up to recently, I asked a mother, when did your son stop going to church? You know what she said? He never went to church. So if we are to be proactive, we have to look at the various institutions of this society. We have to look at the family and do a healing there. My suggestion for many years, and it's not my original thought or idea, and I'm not going to stay claim to it, but there must be mandatory parenting classes in this place. You're taught to drive. You must be taught what is appropriate behavior for children. And if we set the tone in the family, that is one institution. The other institution which will take on and follow up is the institution of the church, which gives you that follow up moral foundation as well as all the other things that a decent family would give. Then the school is also involved. So I'm saying that it is a, you have all of these institutions who must work together before the children reach the stage. Magistrate Weeks made clear that judicial officers are doing all they can to assist young people who appear before the law courts, but he wants to see more done for ex-convicts as they try to rebuild their lives after leaving jail. A concerted program, not in prison, but out here, out in the public to address the same persons who will come back out to us. Because in talking to a number of these young people, I tell all of them, a lot of time, you have potential. What do you wish to do? How are you going to get there? A lot of them have no idea. One is a musician. How are you going to be a musician? He has no idea. And the people in his house can't tell him how to get there. So we must start a program out here to try to deal with a lot of these issues. Criminologist Kim Ramsey called for authorities to implement a parole system. She believes this could help former inmates to reintegrate into society. We have some kind of system. Um, I mean, Jamaica has it, St. Lucia has it, there are other Caribbean countries that have it, Bahamas has it. Um, I, I believe that um, a good running um, parole system um, can, can be very useful in terms of not only acting as a deterrent, but it can be um, some kind of system for persons who are near the end of their sentence, who are like a year in, um, away from, from the end of their sentence, where they can go back into society and prove their worth, um, monitored by, by um, parole officers, probation officers. Five people, two women and three men are the most recent victims of COVID-19 in Barbados. Today, an 84-year-old man lost his fight with the virus at the Blackman and Gollop Isolation Facility. Three of the deceased passed away on Tuesday. A 60-year-old woman died at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility, an 87-year-old man at the Accident and Emergency Department, and an 89-year-old man at the Queen's College Isolation Facility. Additionally, an 88-year-old woman died on Sunday at the Accident and Emergency Department at the QEH. All of the deceased were Barbadians and unvaccinated. Their deaths bring the total number of persons who have succumbed to the virus to 188. Meanwhile, 335 people, 155 males and 180 females were identified as COVID-19 positive from 2,078 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the new cases, 79 persons were under the age of 18 and 256 were 18 years and older. There were 899 people in isolation facilities and 6,413 in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable and 
the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities and I love my mum and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional News, the Bahamas must mourn the tragic death of four-year-old Bella Walker, who died last Friday as a result of blunt force trauma to her body, which resulted in multiple fractures. That's the view of the president of the Grand Bahama Krishna Council, who called on the country to protect children. Police are treating Bella's death as suspicious, and a man and woman have been taken into custody in connection with the matter. This is an atrocity. This is the worst of the worst of crimes that we've probably ever experienced in our country. And I would hate to see it ever happen again. President of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, Reverend Dr. Robert Lockhart, along with members of the council, meeting with the family members of Bella Smith, who reside here in Grand Bahama. Reverend Lockhart says they were able to hear about the loving, smart, and friendly person that Bella was, as well as pray with the family and offer support. They shared with us videos and pictures of the little girl. And, um, I mean, it's just um, um, it's really a sad situation that this whole country uh, should be mourning over. Um, I think... Um, Little Bella, is in, in this incident, has become a part of all of us. But it also lets us know some of the dangers that are out there um, um, in regards to our little children. And we do need to do a better job as a, as a country, as a nation, as a community, because I, as I hear the story, I can see that there were opportunities for this little girl to have been helped. Reverend Lockhart says that this unfortunate incident must awaken a greater sense of community and awareness that there are children living in unsafe conditions. He says that if you see or suspect a child is being harmed in any way, physically, emotionally, or sexually, you must speak up. If we pick up any signs of a child being in danger or being in the company of someone that is not safe for them to be with, even if they're a family member, friend, whatever it is, we know that the, the circumstance um, that's here. And we all know, any of us that have dealt with young people and, and, and um, school age kids, that this is something that is not new amongst us as a Bahamian people in our communities. But we must do a greater job and all pull together to make sure that, that, that this kind of atrocity never happens again. On the international scene, the United States and China have pledged to increase cooperation on climate change at COP26. The announcement came as COP26 entered a new phase of negotiations today after a first draft of the summit's final decision was circulated. The document now goes to representatives from nearly 200 countries who will try and negotiate a final deal before COP26 ends on Friday. The UN is urging governments to phase out coal and cut about half of all emissions by 2030. But to the dismay of many climate activists, there's no explicit promise to end all fossil fuel consumption. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson back in Glasgow says the summit is on the verge of making significant steps to tackle climate change. Here in Glasgow, the world is closer than it has ever been to signalling the beginning of the end of anthropogenic climate change. And it's the greatest gift we can possibly bestow on our children and our grandchildren and generations unborn. And it's now within reach at COP26, in these final days, we just need to reach out together and grasp it. And so my question to my fellow world leaders this afternoon, as we enter the last hours of COP, is will you help us do that? Will you help us grasp that opportunity or will you stand in the way? That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. 
We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.